Hey, Paul. Hey, Fab. How are you? Good. Cool. All right. So this is for this episode is about kicking the year off, right? Um, obviously, uh, here in North America, the New Year is a big thing, uh, and I think we've both kind of noticed that it's sometimes hard for sales team to get started. I mean, sales teams, but I mean, we talk about RevOps, so marketing teams and, and service teams as well. Um, and I think from experience, we've noticed a few reasons. So we were going to talk about yeah. uh, the psychological effect, the motivation, yep. new systems and processes. Um, so let me set the table. So the psychological effect, obviously, I mean, uh, you know, for a lot of us, even even if we're only taking a few days off, right? Like the, the reality is like most industries are at a, if not a standstill, very much slower pace during the, you know, the week before uh, Christmas, the, the week of the New Year's and, and so on and so forth. And sometimes even like we said, even if you're working, it's a little hard to kind of get back into it, right? To accept that people have, and, and often our, our leads and prospects and our clients are also having a hard time getting back into it. So it's hard to get the machine back up and running. Absolutely. What I've seen is that sometimes, you know, you're only getting back up and running like on January 15th or 20th. And by then it's almost impossible to, to get your January numbers to the right place, right? So unless you have a sales manager who's taking that into account and January has very low targets, um, but is that something you've noticed as well? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something I've noticed that things always take a while to take off in January. And people come back, trickle back in. Some people take extended holidays. But, you know, if you're prepared for this and you know this is happening, you know, like you said, some some you know smart sales managers say, well, we'll just we'll reduce um, our expectations for this month. But that might be seen as being defeatist as well. Um, so what I say to people, because often it's hard to, what also happens often is that the targets for the year aren't ready. Uh, the companies are not uh, prepared to tell the, the sales teams of what it is they're hoping to uh, get out of results from, from them. So I think what you have to do as a, as a sales leader, uh, whether you're a VP, your manager, um, a director, you have to have a plan of action to, to an action plan that enables your people to get moving from the time they're back. So even mm. if you don't have the budgets or the quotas for the year, just get your people moving and, and help them understand, um, help them understand from themselves what they should be keeping themselves accountable to, to have success. So, you know, don't depend on the executives of the company to tell you what you need to do. You should have your own action plan to get going. Um, right. Because I, I actually personally think that early January um, is a really good time to uh, reach out to people if you're if you're um, if you're selling a product or service because a lot of people are happy they're back from the holidays they've had uh, time to relax so it's often the best time uh, people are in a great mood so it's a good time to speak to them so if you're if you're not taking advantage of this mm. time you might be missing out on some opportunities. Um, and if you're just waiting to uh, to, to, to get the the uh, objectives or quotas from your high end executives, and you're sort of slacking off the first few weeks of January, you're not doing yourselves any favor. Um, yeah, it's an old expression. It's boring, but the early bird gets the worm. You know, just get out there <laughs> and get moving. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. First of all, things will never be perfect. Uh, there'll always be readjustments, and, and you know, particularly if you work in a large corporation. So yeah. create your own action plan and your managers encourage your people to create their own action plans and you help them make, create their action plan. Yeah. Yeah. I think and you're right. Like they're both kind of hand in hand. I think one is like, that's just getting dusting off the cobwebs. I think also requires like action plans and, and activities and, you know, maybe year. I know, I know a lot of companies have like kind of sales kickoff meetings at the beginning of the year, but even if you don't like just having maybe an unofficial kick off with a team and, yeah. and, and, uh, and being honest, right. We've talked about honesty in, in a few other shows, right? Like, Oh, we don't have the numbers yet, but you know, like let's assume that it's 10 to 15% higher and, and we'll adjust when we actually get the numbers, but you know, and, and how can we reach that? And, you know, like helping them, like you said, set up their plan. I think, I think the two kind of 
even though they're a bit different, they still kind of work together because it's it's kind of more of a motivational psychological side of of selling. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, selling selling. Of course, there's some you know technical aspects, and there's a lot of things you can learn. But a lot of it's your state of mind, right? And if your state of mind, if your motivation is in the in the right place, then you'll want to do the right things to get there. But yeah. It, a lot of people at this time of year start shifting um, into okay, what, what uh, they they get into creative mode and they start thinking, okay, what is it I want to do? I personally love it's it's sort of like prospecting in a week. So let, let's let's take a week as an example. You've got five days of you know most of the time you got Monday to Friday they're prospecting. A lot of people do their prospecting you know on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they say ah oh, Thursday, Friday you know people aren't into it. Well those are often the best times of the week to prospect because mm. th people are not being called. People are not being um, coveted to, to they're, they're not being reached out to, to, to speak about anything. So mm. early January is the same thing. It feels, ah, people, why would I reach out to them at that time of year? Why would I do that? So try to think outside the box, try to go against the grain there. And if you're organized with your own action plan and you're not waiting for, what everyone else is waiting for and you get moving faster well it's gonna it's gonna play in that positive role but you have to put yourself in the right state of mind you know you have yeah. to get over uh you have to get over uh, turkey brain <laughs> or, or holiday brain you know um and and move forward yeah yeah and then the the last point we want to talk about was um and maybe there'll be others that, that pop up but is uh kind of new systems new processes so and maybe that's something I've seen. Uh, I've seen a bit less this year, but overall, I see like you know companies have realized at the end of the year they have budgets left to spend, and so they'll you know change CRMs or upgrade parts of their CRM or change processes, and they have budget to spend, so they they buy new tools, they they hire consultants to help things yeah. done. But uh, what I find often is like they want to get it done by January because obviously that's what I mean. Again, depends on fiscal years as well, but that's often when budget end. Um, but but what I've realized is that then the budget is spent on building the new thing, whether you know migrating to a new CRM, building a new sales process, whatever it is. And but but then January comes around and the team isn't chained on it, right? And so the team doesn't know it's it's a new system, it's a new way of doing things, and they're not aware of that. Um, so my uh, what I what I've done with a few people in the past is like we're like okay well we're gonna spend the budget this year or like in the previous year but we're gonna take part of that and and use it for training and onboarding yeah. and coaching yeah. in the new year because like that it, it suits their purpose of spending the budget when they they have it um but it, it also helps the team getting um up and running right because that's, that's the worst because that's absolutely. the worst you can do right you're spending on a new system or a new process and then nobody's using it and there's no yeah. budget to train them yet. I, I, I totally agree, you know, and again, you know, whatever, psychologically speaking or philosophically speaking, um, if you're training someone on a new system, it's great. But the thing that's really going to help them move forward is coaching because we all know most human beings, you know, uh, training is great. You, they, they teach you how to do things, but then you get back into your own reality and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember the, the trainer said, talked about this or that, you know, and my new, um, my new CRM, but I don't remember how to do it. So, oh, you know what? I'll just take my notes, do it the old way. So make sure yeah. that you're, you're coaching people there and that you have, that you have someone who can help your team really absorb that. And sometimes you do need, most human beings need to be taught and trained and coached many times before they absorb a new way of doing something. Um, yeah. And I remember, you know, anecdotally, I remember in the past being trained on a CRM and, you know, we had like whatever, four one hour sessions, and then we're expected to go and be perfectly up and running on, <laughs> I won't name the CRM, but a very complex CRM. Um, and, and it just, it didn't work. People were just like, whatever. So, yeah. But had they, had they really put time into coaching and saying, okay, let's, let's apply it individually to the people and make sure it works. Then you'll, you'll have much more sticking power, you know, staying. Power. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's just, it's just the way things work. If you, if you if you do it properly, it'll have a much better thing. So again, to your point, make sure that you're using part of your budget in coaching, not just training and not just uh, buying the, the software. Yeah. Because, 
I, I realize that you know you do have budget left over and, and you want to spend it so you can continue uh, getting budget, but uh, you know spending it just to spend it is not going to help you in the long run, right? right? And so you need to make, make sure that if it's something that re- involves a change, change in systems, change in processes, it does require training and coaching on the, in the following year. Um, so yeah, so those, I mean, those are some of the blockers. I mean, obviously there's a lot of blockers, you know, there's uh, clients that are not there, you know, right? Some of the, some of your prospects and clients are, are dealing with the same turkey yeah. brain and cobwebs and stuff like that. And so uh, there's that to overcome. Um, but I think with, with what we talked about with, you know, helping the team plan their activities and their action plans and uh, helping them kick, kicks out of the year, whether it's like an unofficial sales kickoff until you have your official sales kickoff um, and also planning for training and budget out of the, I think I personally like the idea of training and coaching at the beginning of the year, because I find you're right. Like training is, doesn't last very long, right? People forget, but I find they have like a nice motivational, aspirational, inspirational impact sometimes. So if you can, kick off the year with a training and then add in some coaching sessions along with the other stuff we talked about. I think you're, I think that'll help, help, uh-huh. the, help the ball rolling. 100%, you know, and it, it, it really helps the ball rolling. So there's two things, you know, so tactically speaking, what should you do? Training, coaching, psychologically, take advantage of the time. Don't wait till everything's perfect. Don't wait till you get the, the perfect budget. So the perfect setup, just get going in the new year um, and, and, and create your action plan to, to make things happen. Yeah. Awesome. You know, Paul, this is short and sweet, which is great. Good. So you, if you're listening to this in the new year, you, uh, you're not spending time procrastinating, listening to a podcast. Exactly. You're, you're, out you're getting into action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul. All right. Uh, Thanks. Your time. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Fab. Bye, everyone.